I want to welcome everybody back to UPB Dental Academy's Leadership in Times of Crisis. I'm here as always with Dr. Agatha Biss and thrilled and delighted to have uh, Karen DeLottenville with us. She's a coach and a mentor from the Ottawa area, currently supporting the Sinclair team. And uh, I've, had the, I've had the opportunity of actually working with Karen I'm in the DSO space in the past. So we go way back. We've got, uh, we've got an interesting business history. She's got a lot to offer today. Karen, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody a bit more about you. Hi, thanks, Mark. So uh, my name is Karen DeLottenville. Worked for 30 plus years in the uh, dental space. From a clinical background, I was the CEO of a, of a DSO and uh, wanted to wanted to get out of that role and thought I had more to offer as a, as a coach and an educator. So I took the leap in 2016 and uh, I've never looked back. I love it. Karen, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious why we're having these conversations right now because the world is in a, a state and a turmoil that we probably never experienced. Uh, we, we had the downturn, the economic downturn in, in 08, which was uh, a huge hit to our industry. Uh, we remember 9-11, we remember uh, Black Monday, but this is different. This is a, a tragedy, a pandemic that's affecting us, not only at the dental space, but globally at every level. And I'm, I'm just curious, what, what was your first impression when this started to roll out? What were your first feelings before it became full-fledged? What I felt is that it really, it neutralized everyone as as people as business owners as employees we were all on the same playing field I, and i remember some of the conversations we had where i don't think we took it that seriously out of the gate and then you watched it evolve as you returned home and i'm just curious what your thoughts are as, as it evolved for you from being on vacation hearing this on a daily basis watching a resort literally go from packed to no one and then coming home to this it was just so bizarre coming home to like a completely empty airport, being like the only plane that landed, everything is stopped. I mean, I have pictures of like just my luggage and like nothing else across the entire terminal. So to come home and go from 100 to zero. So I'm, I'm curious, and I'll ask you both this because you're coming from two different environments. Karen, you're a coach in the dental space. You're affiliated with a, a large vendor. And Aggie, you uh, obviously being a doctor and you've got a team of your own. How are the, what were the first reactions like of the, the people that you work with and how are they coping right now? Karen, I'll, I'll let you answer that first. How, how are people that you're associated with coping with this? How are they processing it? What meaning are they giving it? In the dental industry, it was such a shock. Uh, when the RCDSO uh, mandated and or strongly suggested, they didn't. <laughs> you know, I think it's been amazing how businesses have been able to pivot so quickly to support each other from an arm's length and a technology has kicked, really kicked in and, and allowed us to keep in touch with our, with our clients, with our patients, with our businesses, with our family and friends. I mean, I've got an 84 year old mother that, <laughs> You know, she now, we have cocktail hour with each other and it, it, uh, Aggie is a dentist, so she can speak to this, but a lot of dentists are not inherent leaders. And so they're struggling. They've got, they've got their teams looking at them for answers. They've got the financial uh, responsibility of not only their facilities, but their, their family, their own families. And they've got the, the uh, weight of their teams on their shoulders. And they're not traditionally, um, not everyone's comfortable with that, with that role. So communication has been imperative to try to encourage yeah. doctors to stay in touch with their, with their teams. Yeah. And, and for you, Aggie, as a doctor and coming back, like you said, you were at an arm's length. Uh, this didn't seem real to you when you're on vacation. Nothing and... ever seems real to me, though. So. <laughs> But then you're, you're putting it all together and you've got a team that's sitting here feeding you information. What was their reaction? How are you supporting them? And how's, and how's that working for you as a, as a leader right now? It's funny because um, one of the things Karen talked about, just the issue of lack of leadership on a lot of uh, shoulders of dentists. And I speak to some classmates and other dentists that are like local. And there is a lot of dentists who really don't know how to take charge. And that's kind of the key, right? So communication, but also just being the one that steps up and says, okay, this is what this means. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to reach out to patients. So somebody needs to step up and just say, follow me. 
right? And there's a lack of that in our community. And, you know, I'm not surprised. And we're not naturally um, strong leaders. We're analytical, we're OCD. We like to be in our own little spaces, right? This is what, you know, who's drawn to dentistry. So to expect dentists in general to become these Tony Robbins type people, that's, that's just sort of not part of who we are naturally. Now, Mark knows me in the sense that I tend to skate over a lot of big issues and not really take them very seriously. And so I feel like, you know, things will work out. And so I'm kind of going with that belief along the way. And I always kind of have that belief. But in the meantime, I am seeing a lot of what you're saying, which is, you know, how do you deal with your team? How do you deal with your patients? How do you communicate what you're feeling? Because we can't communicate the extent of the financial debt that we're taking on and how it's costing us right now with the shutdowns. We can't communicate that to the patients because that's just totally inappropriate. And the question is, how do you really communicate it to your team? Because your team doesn't really understand the numbers, right? I mean, if you say that overhead is $50,000 a month, for example, nobody understands what that means unless you're a practice owner. And so how do you explain to your team that not only are you, you know, you have your personal life like they do, and that's what we're all struggling with, our mortgage, our car, our utilities, whatever, but then we're still dripping money or bleeding money, some more than others right now. And that's a tough thing to communicate and still stay strong and in charge and not blame, right? Because that's one of the things that for me, my first reaction was like, how can you not understand me when I'm the one not only taking on this whole debt and, you know, rent and all this when we shut down, um, when everyone is just kind of going, well, what do you mean we're uh, laid off? Like, what about the money that aren't you going to pay us? And so a lot of dentists, when we had to shut down and we had to lay people off, what our people, what I was hearing initially is that a lot of employees were blaming the dentist. There was a lot of blame going on. And I saw a lot on social media where staff was posting things about their dentist that was really, really nasty. And as time went on, like a week, two later, when everybody realizes, oh yeah, um, everyone's laid off and everyone's suffering. And now these rents are still coming out and all this. And all of a sudden we saw them come back together. But it took, I think it does take somebody to step up and say, look, I understand what you were feeling. Let's not even go there. Now let's come together. Let's put it behind us and let's figure out how to still stay a team. I also believe that dentistry is very much a silo individual. You know, if you're a single practitioner, you're not necessarily uh, in touch with your peers, sharing the stresses of running a business. Don't have that insight or that fortitude that you said, uh, Aggie, to see to see that you'll you'll get out of this. There is a lot of talk uh, about you know I won't survive this. How am I going to, you know, how am I going to manage this? And with all of the requirements with the PPE and the you know the aerosols and what I'm offering is optimism. I mean, we will get through this. I mean, you will get through it. And I think that dentists have to understand that you know this is an unprecedented, unimaginable time. We're not going to go back the way we were. We're going to have to, you know, come back in steps and in phases. I think there's a lot of apprehension from from an employment standpoint where maybe the employees really were just hanging on to that job because it was a job they had to they had to have a job. So to take that step to leave maybe perhaps a, a, an office that wasn't a, a positive environment for them. So there will be, I feel there'll be a, a little bit of attrition on both parts. Mm-hmm. I think dentists will be able to select those, those A players, those superstars that really make a difference in a practice. And I think that the, the people that were just on the bus <laughs> might not make the cut. This is a moment where dentists should be looking at their, at their data, at their numbers, really analyzing practices, what makes sense. I think bench strength will be important to your team members, having somebody that offers more than, you know, one capability in a team, because you you may not have that luxury of hiring two people to do 
to do a job. You might have to have one person do the job until the practice can sustain another salary. One of the things that you mentioned uh, when you were talking about the numbers, that's one thing that, well, Mark knows, I implemented a little while ago in my office before this whole thing happened. And uh, I'll post info on how to get the whole program because I have this um, available on our uh, website at UPB Dental Academy. But one of the things I did, and kind of in a nutshell, was I created a system that allows my whole team to understand the numbers and how to fit into certain numbers in terms of global operating expenses. Not like I don't sit there and go, we have to spend you know, 5% on dental supplies or X percent on payroll. We, there's a global number for operating expenses and there is a percentage for profit, percentage for taxes, like you break it up every single day. And by them understanding that we have to stay within these numbers in order to continue moving forward, it's not about, oh, well, you know, we build 23,000 today, like, oh my God, she must be rolling in money. No, because, you yeah. know, last week we were short and they're seeing it. And then this week is going to make up for whatever shortfall we had last week, or maybe come up and, and pay for something next week that's coming up, or maybe some equipment broke down and we had to cover that. So having them understand those numbers and what they mean in the global sense on a daily basis shifted everything. Because when I did come back, people actually did go, well, what about rent? And what about like, yeah, we're not getting paid, but what about all the other expenses that you're still going to have to keep going and paying? So that is really, really critical for dentists to communicate to their team. And I think this is such a great opportunity because we're about to come back to our office. Mm -hmm. And this is such a cool opportunity to say, here, I'm going to introduce this into my practice. We're going to follow this every day. You guys are going to help me help us recover and stay recovered long term. Numbers are power. And yeah. we are in the business of dentistry. It is a business. And if you're not watching your bottom line, you look at financial statements, which are so far behind, right? You're, that means you're even worse off because if those are your papers from last year, then what's happened this year? Because you've been like riding this wave thinking you're going like this, but you're actually going down. So the way to fix that is to just look at today and move forward and move forward as opposed to what happened last year. Because like, I'm going to show what happened last year because this is not what this year is about. This year is a and a half and we have to find a way to keep moving forward with new numbers and with new yeah. expenses. And the debt we're all taking on to keep going has to come from somewhere. So that is going to increase, you know, operating. Of course, you shift. Yeah, you, you're going to have to recap that. And it could take you six months, nine months. I mean, 2020 will not be a profitable business year. It can be a profitable year if you start to focus on how to do things differently moving forward because you still have half a year left, right? So yes, whatever happened, but, you know, I want to raise. Like you say, Aggie, they have no idea what, your, what their cost is. They have no idea what the numbers are. I like, I'm going to put my boxing gloves down. I love the topic of um, <laughs> raises and, you know, oh, it's time and why and all this other stuff. So I don't want to get off on that, but I just feel like people don't understand what a raise is about. Like a raise means you've raised above and the bar. Yeah. What supposed to be doing, which means, you know, what you, you don't get paid for the hour. You get paid for the value you bring to the hour. So if you're coming to me because it's time, you might as well turn around and walk out. I want to know what you've done differently this year than you did in the past year to earn that raise. And I actually give raises without being asked because when I see people perform above and beyond and they absolutely deserve that raise, they will get it, which means people who are thinking, oh, it's my time, but I didn't get one. They're actually afraid to come and ask for a raise at that point because they know that they missed the boat and the other person is known for helping everybody and going above and beyond. So anyways. So well, secretly, <laughs> secretly, you do, secretly, you do understand the flower analogy, but I'm not even going to get into that. Ah. <laughs> I, get anyway, Karen, Karen, well, I need I, to get you, my tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, you touched a lot on the, on the numbers, the analytics. So we'll definitely have uh, Peter Evans from EDMS on so he can share with us on how that can balance. Um, those numbers and give those to people, you know, at the palm of their hand so they have an understanding of how the metrics of the clinic are running. Agatha, do you have anything in closing today for us with your massive words of wisdom and your tomatoes? 
All right, I'll keep it short then. <laughs> um, all right, life is tough, but so am I. And I think that we all need to remember that this too shall pass. And just like we don't remember just how hard it was in 2008 and seven, um, you know, it's such a distant memory, but it was a significant drop in revenue. And I mean, I think the economy went down by like 56% or something like that. And now we kind of look back and go, oh yeah, I think it was kind of a rough year, but we, we forget. And we will forget this too over time. We just have to stay tough, keep plugging away. And as actually Tim Brown said, um, you know, act like you were first starting out, you know, hustle, work at it, whether you have to clean the floors on your own because that saves you money at the beginning, or you have to sterilize by yourself because you're the only person that can go back to work. Do whatever it takes to come back and come back stronger. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And Karen, we definitely appreciate your time today. Karen DeLottenville from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, Thanks. one of our leading coaches and our leading influencers in the dental industry. We appreciate every minute of your time. Thanks very much, guys. It's a pleasure. Thank Take you. Care. I'm drinking coffee before these. I'm like all wired. <laughs> <laughs> coffee keeps us busy until it's appropriate to drink wine. <laughs> Aggie, Aggie and I got in a fight last night and she was recording. Oh. And it's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> we were fighting nice. about, about, about an opinion. Yeah, we were arguing about the difference between flowers and money. And Mark thinks it's the same thing. If you give flowers or you give money, it's the same thing. And I'm like, are you stupid? No, see, we're gonna get into this again. We're gonna get into this again. Yeah. It was a metaphor, you crazy fraud. <laughs> I feel All like right, it's something it. darker on them. Seriously. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It 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 kind of it, it goes a lot like in contrast with my personality, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs>